Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl M. Um, I just wanted to make a video about being unequally yoked and what it means to me in my life and also what it means spiritually as well as um, how it affects your walk in faith and how it's easy to fall back in you know the ways of the flesh because if someone that you're with constantly is doing that in front of you and it's like really hard you know to stay true and walk that narrow path so I just wanted to make this video um, to show you guys uh, how I feel about being unequally yoked as well as you know other things pertaining to like scriptural so I hope you like it and enjoy okay you guys I'm gonna do the best I can by showing you how the Bible literally uses be suburban as an example for being unequally yoked so here goes now if you were able to take a donkey and an ox and yoke them together which by the way I want to tell you guys that God forbid that in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 10 um, the yoke would weigh heavily on one of the animals while choking the other one or even the other animal with the longer stride would move ahead and then it would painfully drag the other one along by its neck. Now obviously they would not be able to pull smoothly or painlessly together and of course little work would get done. But if you took two animals of approximately the same size and weight and yoke them together they would then be able to pull the plow more smoothly helping each other and work would be accomplished this way okay now that I've obviously simplified that for you guys a great deal <laughs> so that you could understand what I mean um, let's discuss how being unequally yoked affects someone spiritually now what I feel is that becoming attached to a person who does not share your faith in Jesus Christ um, can be just as painful and counterproductive as the illustration of the unequally yoked animals whether attached to someone financially or emotionally you are connected to someone who cannot pull equally within your life so how does a person become unequally yoked well I certainly don't think that anybody sets out in life and says hey Jenny I think I'm going to marry a godless heathen someday. Uh, no. But I'm going to show you that there are several ways that you could find yourself in an unequally yoked marriage. Um, here's an example. Well, some examples. Perhaps you were ignorant of your potential spouse's spiritual condition because you never asked them about their beliefs. Because you never sat them down and said, Hey, honey, do you believe in Jesus? Or perhaps you asked them, but they misrepresented themselves by telling you that they were a Christian when they weren't. And you know how many times you've heard that before. Hey, I'm a Christian. No, I'm not. But anyways, <laughs> maybe you married an unbeliever because you didn't know what God's word prohibits. Because you never picked up a Bible and read what God's word asks of you. Or maybe you might have been fully aware of what God's Word says but you willfully married an unbeliever anyways or you could be in my situation where you and your spouse were both unbelievers and then you got married and then one came to the faith before the other so no matter how you may have found yourself in a spiritually unequal marriage I'm gonna show you how scripture has plenty to say on the subject so let's take a look.
Okay, so I want to address the fact that some people think that being in an in a racial marriage is being unequally yoked, and I don't think that is the case. Um, if both of you guys are Christians, then you would have a common foundation in Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible to work from. Um, you are not unequally yoked just by the color of your skin or the race of yourself. If that was the case, otherwise, um, Ruth could not have been in Jesus' family tree because she was a pagan who converted to the Jewish religion. So, as you can see, Ruth was not a Jew racially, so I don't think it really matters. Then, of course, you have your um, interdenominational marriages, such as uh, someone being married to a Methodist or a Pentecostal or a Catholic or Baptist. You know, there's so many, etc., etc. And even though there are problems in interdenominational marriages, the Bible does not consider this unequally yoked because you still have the basics in common. Um, you both put your faith and trust in Jesus and you have the same Holy Spirit to guide the both of you and you use holy scriptures um, such as the Bible as your guide. So you are not unequally yoked in that aspect except that you simply worship the same God in a slightly different matter. So now I want to go ahead and sum up my video and um, address how some people would think that it would be easy to go ahead and divorce the unbelieving spouse. Well, in the Bible, it clearly states in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 through 14, that you should not divorce if he or she is willing to stay in the marriage. Now, what does this mean? Um, it means you can't leave but even though that they might not be um, a believer of God uh, how do you know that you might be the key to them um, accepting Christ how do you know that maybe you're the only one that um, will ever give them a chance to come to Christ you have to really think about these types of things for me personally, this would not be something, you know, to take lightly. This is not a small matter when you're dealing with someone's salvation. So, um, this gives you a lot to think about that um you may be the one to actually be able to help your spouse um save their soul um just by your walk in faith or your change in attitude, even your prayer life and most importantly your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Either way, you will play a vital role in the salvation of um, your spouse's soul. So if anything you take from this, I would like for you guys to take that um, maybe you just might be the key for your spouse being able to accept Christ into their life.